great to be in the Father's house. So the song is an invitation for healing. And in, uh, the chorus is, if you lead me, Lord, I will follow. Where you lead me, Lord, I will go. So let's follow the healer together. healing of all is when we get saved and the Lord 
calls us and we come out of our uh, metaphorical grave, right? Seated. Let's have the children come on down. Look at these good looking kids up in here. Yeah, we're almost. Uh, there's something in the way over here, and I'm not sure what it is. A whole bunch of boxes. You can try scooting them, but they got rubber bands on them. So, you know. Whoops, you're going to drop one. Okay. So, you guys know what these boxes are for, right? Yeah? You don't know. Some of you haven't been here. To know, you know, what, what are they for? Yes, for other kids that don't have anything for Christmas, right? Could you imagine, hi, sweetheart, can you imagine if it was Christmas and you didn't get any presents? That wouldn't be cool, huh? That, that wouldn't be very good. Well, what if, what if it was Christmas and you never had a present your whole life, and then all of a sudden you get one? Maybe you're in another country, you go to church, and the pastor has a whole bunch of boxes, 
and he gives one to every child that's there. That's pretty cool, isn't it? So we had a packing party uh, to pack these boxes. You were here, I think. You guys helped. Who helped pack the boxes? Yeah. Well, now the most important thing we have, we have one more thing left to do. Can you tell me what it is? Guess what it is we have to do. Shut them. Well, they look kind of shut. What, what are you thinking? What do we have left to do? Sell them. No, sweetheart, we don't sell them. We give them away. We send them. That's true. Tomorrow we're going to send them. But what do we have to do today? You know. Pray. Good man. Yeah. So let's gather around here, kids. Let's gather around and pray over these boxes, okay? Come stand up and come on over here. You got the whole, the whole crew of you. Come on down. And you can put a hand up on a box if you want. These ones up here. Okay? Let's do that. So think about the fact that there's a child somewhere in the world that's going to get one of these boxes. How many of them do you think we, we did this year? More than that. Nope, 50. <laughs> You're in the zone, no, 50. Maybe next year we'll do 75. We're at f we did 50 this year. That's a, that's a good record, isn't it? Hi, Jesse. Yeah. You're so shy. Let's pray. <laughs> Shall we pray? Lord, thank you for everybody, first of all, that gave things to put in these gifts for people, ki children around the world. Lord, we pray for the kids that will be receiving these boxes, that they will be blessed, not just to receive the gift, but to also receive the greatest gift of all, which is Jesus in their heart. So, Lord, use these boxes, help the pastors that will be giving them out so that they can share Jesus with the kids and the kids will come to faith in Christ and, and be born again, born anew. And uh, may your word go out, and we know it won't go out void. It will return with many blessings. So. Take these boxes, bless them, we pray. In Jesus' name, and all the kids said, amen. amen. Good job. Thank you. Uh, to see that. So a few family matters before we get to the message today. First of all, uh, we just covered that, didn't we? 50 shoe boxes. I thought that was funny. You thought 75. Huh. One, day. One day, maybe next year. Okay, so this coming Thursday, we have a community Thanksgiving service. Uh, to celebrate Thanksgiving, and we, we rotate this from church to church, okay? Now, this year, we're going to a new place, Fostoria United Methodist. Uh, Dave Freeland recently uh, was appointed there as pastor, so uh, his retired pastor lives up in Mayville, I think, and so, but we want to be there, and uh, if you want to come for food, come at 6 o'clock for a potluck, and then the worship service is at 7. We have community choirs going to sing, the United Methodist uh, Praise Band is going to be there this, uh, this time. They'll be leading some songs. And so come and enjoy um, and get, in, get to know some of your neighbors who go to some of these other churches in the area. Um, we'll be receiving a special offering again at the end of the month on November 29th. When you think about our well and water system, we replaced everything except we didn't dig a new well. But we, we put a new pump, new pipes, new tanks and all the plumbing that goes with it. Uh, the total bill came to over 10 grand, so um, the second of eight payments is due, so if you could help with a special offering, we ask you to pray about that, uh, and then we'll receive that. Well, you can put it in anytime you want, but especially the last Sunday of the month is when we look for some kind of an over and above offering, and so uh, for the near future, those over and above gifts are going to go to paying that bill been very gracious with us, allowing us to make payments on that. Uh, so in terms of the offering, today we'll receive in the box in the back as usual. Uh, there's information in your bulletin about how to give online at the bottom of the back of it. It'll explain to you how to do that if you'd rather do that. We have some folks that uh, say they can be more regular if they use, use this app that we provide. So appreciate that. You're welcome to use that. And let's go on to some good stuff here. I'm excited about this sermon series. It's uh, called Follow the Healer. And today 
we're going to talk about what made Jesus do for you. I mean, we know that he can do uh, whatever he wants to do, right? But we also uh, think to ourselves, well, what, what may he do for me? What would he do for you? So last week we discovered why God heals. And God heals because he loves. And the important thing about that is that when we pray for somebody to receive healing, we're praying for them to experience the love of God and then getting out of Jesus' way and letting him heal the person however he sees fit. Jesus prayed that two-sided coin prayer where he said, uh, Lord, let this cup pass from me. And then on the other side of that coin was, nevertheless, your will be done before he went to the cross. So there are two sides to it, and it's his will because he's the healer. So he heals because he loves. And uh, today we're going to look at the most, uh, well, we're going to look at how he does it. How, how does he actually do this healing? In what ways does he heal? And, you know, church, I think this may be the most important message uh, that I've preached and so really kind of let, listen to the Lord as we go through this stuff. Um, so in Matthew 9, 18 to 26, uh, Jesus agrees to go with a man by the name of Jairus to his home because his daughter got sick and, and has died. But this man comes to Jesus and says, if you will come, you can, you can heal her, you can raise her. Uh, would you just come with me? Come back to my house. So Jesus says, yes, I will come. And so he, he goes with the man. And on his way, a crowd formed around Jesus. And, and that, was, that was pretty typical, that crowds would form and follow him from place to place at this point in his ministry. And so um, a woman who is not allowed to be around crowds of people She's had a uh, debilitating disease, and the Bible says for 12 years. So for 12 years she has been sick. She's had a disease that separated her not only from the health in her body, but also from the people that she knew and loved because she wasn't allowed to be around them. She had a bleeding disease, and when you bleed, you're not, you weren't supposed to be you know, touched by anybody else. And so... Um, so she, she's thinking this. She knows Jesus is the healer. And she's thinking, well, I could just touch his robe. And, and back then they had these little tassels on their robes, you know. And she's probably thinking, if I could just touch the corner of the tassel, all I need to do is just touch the tassel of that robe, and, I, and I'll be healed. So she sneaks through the crowd. She's probably rubbing shoulders with people and, and feeling bad about it, but she's got to get the healing. So she finds her way to Jesus, and she touches him in Mark uh, Mark records that Jesus said, stop, who touched me? And the disciples were like, well, we're in a crowd, everybody's touching you. I mean, you know, bouncing shoulders and everything else. We can't hardly keep them away from you. What do you mean? And uh, he says, no, 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 I, I felt power go out of me. And that power we learned last week is the power, the power of his love. Some special loving power went out of him. And uh, not only was she healed, her true identity was restored. And so this the passage I have in your, in your program is Matthew 9, 22. Jesus turned and saw her. He saw her. Well, you want to underline that or circle that. He, he turned around in the midst of this crowd and went, Oh, it's you. Take heart, daughter. Wow. Circle that, daughter. Take heart. Take heart, daughter. Your faith, your faith has healed you. And the woman was healed at that moment. And so we notice how Jesus saw her and how he called her daughter, thereby like restoring her back into the family of God. So how does God heal? There's five ways that God heals. And he often uses a combination of these. We're going to go through these. First, of course, is supernatural healing. Uh, Jesus still to this day can do supernatural healing. One of my favorite stories from Scripture is when Jesus is on his way to Damascus. I mean, Saul. Saul is on his way to Damascus. He wants to persecute the followers of Jesus who ran out of Jerusalem and ended up in Damascus. 
And so he's got a letter that says he can arrest Christians there in Damascus. And so he's on his way. Bright light appears to him. He sees Jesus. Jesus says, why are you persecuting me? And Saul falls to his knees and says, who are you, Lord? And he says, I'm Jesus, who you're persecuting. And so he was blinded by that bright light. His uh, entourage took him the rest of the way to Damascus. And while he was there, the Lord was speaking to Ananias. Now, Ananias was a follower of Jesus there in Damascus. And Ananias was praying. And as he was in prayer, the Lord said, okay, I want you to go over to this house on Straight Street, the, the main street of town, and I want you to pray for this guy named Saul, and he will be healed. We're going to restore his sight. I need you to go over there. And this story always fascinated me because I thought, I'm sure Saul was praying. I'm sure he was saying, I'm sorry, Jesus, please restore my sight. Nothing was happening. And Ananias didn't want to go. He's like, this is the guy that's killing us, and you want me to go pray for him. Well, the Bible says on the third day, I like that third day, is that the third day? Catch that. On the third day, Ananias did go to that house on Main Street. He he found Saul and he prayed for him and said, the Lord has asked me to come and pray that your eyes, sight would be restored. Uh, Ananias prayed for him and Saul could see again. Saul would go on to become the Apostle Paul and would spread the, the gospel throughout the entire, pretty much the entire Roman Empire. On three different mission trips he would take. Uh, he was called by Christ to go to the Gentiles, to go to all the non-Jews, and so he was a, because he was a Roman citizen, and he was raised in Caesarea, it was Saul of Tarsus, Saul of Caesarea, I think it was, uh, or maybe it was Tarsus, Saul of Tarsus. Uh, so anyway, he could, he could appeal to the Jews because he was a Jew, but then he could also be Paul and appeal to the Gentiles because he was a Roman citizen. So there was, it was pretty, the Lord knew what he was doing. He picked the most unlikely um, agent, if you will, <laughs> not so secret agent, uh, to, to be his ambassador. So supernatural healing, and it still happens today. I shared a story last week about how one time I woke up in the middle of the night. I was in too much pain to even call somebody and say, please pray for me. It was just me and the Lord. I just kept saying, thank you, Lord, thank you, that I know you, I love you, Lord. And uh, I got up for a while, but I could hardly stand. I was in so much pain. I think it might have been appendicitis. Laid back down, and as I'm laying there, um, all of a sudden I felt a peace come over me, and then I felt a warmth, like from here to here. I just all of a sudden got really warm, and then the pain went away. And I'm like, sweet, Lord just supernaturally healed me. Uh, and right after that, I just fell asleep, slept the rest of the night, and I still got my appendix, so hopefully we'll keep it, so... Anyway, so it still happens today, all right? Now, we don't want to forget about doctors and medicine because that's a second way. And Paul, when he was writing, us, he was recognizing that Luke is a doctor uh, traveling with him. So Luke was a physician of the day, wrote the Gospel of Luke and the Book of Acts. Uh, so there is a reference to the doctors and medicine. Now, I heard about a lady who had a bad foot, was born with a problem with her foot and she was told by the Lord that someday I will heal your foot well the time came and a person prayed for her that her foot would be healed and it was healed miraculously well not too long later she got some kind of other disease and people were telling her you need to go to the doctor and she's like no God's going to heal me miraculously just like he did my foot um, she didn't get healed of that second thing and she didn't go to the doctors and get help, and she should have. So we lean on doctors because God still uses others to minister to us, doctors, medicine. Mm. And don't forget our body's healing power. Um, Whitehall Healthcare says sleep helps you heal by increasing blood flow, releasing healing hormones, reduces inflammation, relieves stress, and provides energy for repair. And then the picture there says sleep helps your body heal 
and flight infection. Also uh, boosts your immune system to help fight off germs before you fall ill. So getting a good night's rest is important, and our body does have healing power. Sometimes, even with the doctor's medicine, somebody would just get well. Their bodies would just all of a sudden flip a switch, and they're okay. All right. He also heals by giving us sufficient grace in our suffering. And speaking of the Apostle Paul, he wrote this, Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. Some, he called it the thorn in the flesh, a thorn from Satan to keep him focused on the Lord. We don't know exactly what this illness was. Many people think it was his eyesight might have still been bad. Could have been anything. Um, but he said to me, look, Paul, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. And Paul goes on to say, so I'm going to boast in the Lord when I'm weak because, man, when I'm weak, he is strong. So if this helps keep me focused on, on Christ, then, uh, then thank you, Lord, for the grace to handle it. So that is a gift of grace. I had emotional suffering once when my mother had a massive stroke. She was not going to come out of it. And I, I finally got to the hospital down in Cleveland, and I walked in, and I started crying before I even saw her. I'm standing at the bed, and I'm looking at her, and she's all, you know, full of fluids and everything. Her, she said she was, her, her brain waves were non-existent. She had a massive aneurysm, 1990 this was. And I, I'm standing there, and I'm thinking, Lord, I don't think I can take this. I'm praying for her, but I'm like, I don't think I can take this. And what he told me was, my grace is sufficient for you. I was like, yeah, that's right, it is. I can get through this. Not that I liked it, but I got through it. I even spoke at her funeral. Okay, Victoria's dying is the last one. We've seen that at least twice this year from our own church family. It was Paul who said, living serves Christ and dying is even better. I've got Christ now as I'm alive. If I die, I get to go be with him, so that's even better. And so, I mean, we prayed for Mike Miller, for that ear infection, for God to heal it. He healed it by taking him to heaven. We prayed for his wife, Pat, just a month ago or two, that, uh, you know, the cancer that they, all of, that they all of a sudden discovered was all over her body. Uh, we prayed that she would be healed, and she was healed by, being, by going to heaven. Within six months of Mike, the two of them are running around the streets of gold. Yes. Yes. How many times did she, was she diagnosed with cancer over the years? Okay. Yeah. Wow. So let's talk about what Christ wants to do. What does Christ want to do for you? I mean, as a child of God in Christ Jesus, we know God loves you and he wants to uh, work in your life. He is working in your life in ways you're not even aware. But wait, there's more. God wants to restore you to his image. We were created in his image. God created them in his image. It says in Genesis Male and female, he created them. So, your image can be restored and revived to the image, the original intended image that God has for you. So think about that image of God. The image of God. We're all created in the image of God. Uh, but unfortunately, because of the fall of humanity and because of our own sins, our image is uh, broken and damaged. I mean, the Lord's image in us, if you want to say, uh, is damaged and, and it's broken. Um, so he wants to restore us back to his intended image, and he also wants to rescue you from a damage and a broken image. Um, so what does it mean to be restored to the image of God in his own image? Well, first of all, if you're in Christ, you're equipped to reason, to choose, to worship God and to love others. You'll be, you know, 
us preachers, we talk about this a lot of times, right? Think godly thoughts. Think about heaven. Choose to do the right thing, perhaps the next right thing. Um, choose to worship God and then actively love others. Don't just say it, but do it, show it, even those enemies. So in Christ, you're equipped to do that. That's, that's God's image in you. The next thing, you care, you care for God's creation, so you become a good steward caring for the creation. You bear fruit, multiply, and fill the earth. Remember that from Scripture? It said, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, and have dominion over the, over the animals and all of that. Um, God cares about his creation. He said it was good, and he wants us to keep it good, right? So we're supposed to be good stewards of his creation. We don't worship creation, though, do we? We worship the creator. Too many folks in our day and age worship creation. Of course, that's scriptural, too. It says if you don't worship the creator, you, you will end up worshiping creation, whether it's humans or animals or trees, land, whatever. You'll end up worshiping creation if you ignore the creator. And then the, the next thing in his image, remember that, that uh, Jesus is part of a community, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So we are, uh, we exist to be in community, in relationship. In the body of Christ, we're, we exist to connect to a church and be part of a, the body of Christ. Um, and that's a community, and it is, you know, God has a community too, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He didn't create us because he was lonely, you know. He's a community already, a Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and then he created a bunch of angels uh, to be there. And so, but he created us so that we could love him and worship him. So that's what it means to have the divine image, that God's goal in healing is to restore your divine image. I, the more I think about that, the more I, I kind of like that idea that uh, he's making me into the person he wants me to be and it's, it's kind of the divine image. It doesn't mean he's making us into a little God, but he's, he certainly is making us into a person who looks more like his son. Um, we are predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son. Once you're a Christian, you can't help it. If you cooperate with him, you're going to look more and more like Jesus. And so God wants to rescue you. Talked about the fall of humanity already, and... Oh, this was, this was great. I got from the, uh, the author of the book called Follow the Healer. He says, we, we find ourselves afraid in our broken image. We're, we're afraid, alienated from God, guilty, self-centered, insecure, exploiters of creation, and unable to maintain love for one another. But when you're healed to the divine image, Dr. Siemens says, you trust and know God, obey and receive blessings, you become confident, secure, honest in your dealings with people and with God. You become good stewards of creation, and you openly trust and love others. <laughs> and then he says this, happy thoughts and bootstraps won't do it. <laughs> we need rescuing. <laughs> happy thoughts and bootstraps won't do it. We need rescuing. So my question is, what do you want Jesus to do for you? What do you want him to do for you, even today, right now? All right, is your, need, is your need physical or maybe spiritual? It could be emotional, social, or financial. You know, these problems, they all have a way of affecting our bodies, don't they? Don't we? Don't they? <laughs> so if uh, you're dealing with an emotional turmoil, maybe something from your past or some scar, emotional scar got scuffed up and so... You're stuck back in the past again. It affects your physical body, doesn't it? It releases toxins. You know, you start worrying, you get anxious, and your body starts putting out too much adrenaline, or, you know, your blood pressure goes up. Um, so a lot of these things work together. And so we might go and ask God for a physical healing, but sometimes he's like, well, we really need to get the internal hurt fixed first. So... Just be, be patient with the physical side. My peace I give you, 
Uh, you can be at peace. You don't have to be all worried and stressed out about this. Um, but let's see if we can't figure out why you're so stressed out about this. What are you afraid of? You know, we're afraid, frustrated, and hurt from the past, right? We could be afraid, we could be frustrated, hurt, and all that can make us angry, and we know what angry does to our bodies. doesn't help. Um, so like the woman in Matthew 9.22 you know, will you allow Jesus to restore you to his image? And just to finish that story, he does go on with the man who invited him to the home, and he raises his daughter from the dead. One of three people that Jesus raised from the dead, Lazarus, um, the son of a woman uh, from the town of Nun, and then this, this daughter raised from the dead. They laughed when he said, ah, she's not dead, she's just asleep. They all laughed at him, and he said, all right, you all get out of the room. <laughs> so he kicked them all out, and then he said, hey, get up. <laughs> she stood up. She was alive and came back to life. So oh, the whole crowd says, no, no, she's dead, she's not asleep. We know we talk about it like that. She's just sleeping. No, she's, she's dead. But not when Jesus comes around. He, he loves to bring the dead, the dry bones, the dead bones back to life. James 5.14 is in your program there at the bottom. It says, are any of you sick? You should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. So if you're, when you're sick, ask other people to pray for you, the elders of the church, people you know in the church, your friends, your acquaintances. Certainly when you go to the hospital, call your pastor. Call me, call Nathaniel, call. <laughs> call somebody and say, hey, let them know I'm in the hospital. I don't always find out until somebody's been there and, and back that they were at the hospital because we want to pray. Now, I may or may or may not come and anoint you with oil. I will if you want. Um, and we can do that today uh, because it's important to have others pray over you and then anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Now, we don't do, use a lot of oil like they did with uh, Aaron where he poured so much oil it was running off his beard and everything. <laughs> um, so w usually I just use a little bit of it, but um, the oil represents in Scripture the Holy Spirit. So you're being touched by the Spirit. And, and I, I like to do it in the shape of a cross. Some people would just do it and put their hand on the person's head. I, I kind of was taught by my... Uh, professor in, in school, the way he liked to do it was to, to do the shape of the cross uh, on your forehead. And it, it just feeling that, I think, uh, brings hope to you, knowing that the Holy Spirit's working on you. So in a moment, we are going to give you the opportunity to come up and be healed. If anyone would like to come up, if you can't come up, just raise your hand if you want, like me and Nathaniel or whoever to join around you. We can come, like we can come back to, to you, Cheryl, if you want us to. You don't have to wheel up here. We can come back to you. So, and sometimes you might have a little little one with you. I think the little one's out of the room now, but um, but we can come to you, too. If, you know, maybe we'll start with whoever wants to come up down front and kneel. After that, we'll, I'll look and, and ask if anybody still seated wants, uh, wants us. Some of us have bad knees. We can't come and kneel or whatever. So we'll do that. Um, you also will pray whatever prayer requests you have. I have a couple. First was the, the Faye. I added Faye Morrison on here. And also another person with, uh, I've got that one for Ted Swaddling. We're going to pray for him. And so to prepare our hearts for prayer, we're going to sing a sweet hour of prayer. Great old hymn of the church. We're going to sing sweet hour of prayer. Mm -hmm. Where's my pick? Oh, well, I guess I'll use that one. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer. You got the clicker? Here we go. Sweet hour of prayer.
Peggy's going to keep playing as we go to prayer. Did I turn this on? Yes, I did. All right. We're going to start with uh, these prayer requests that you have. And if anybody would like to be anointed for healing, just let me know. Is it, well, it's down there. Okay. All right, good, good. Lord, we want to start out with a word of praise that we do thank you, Lord, that Janet's daughter, Faye, has been uh, declared totally free of cancer. Lord, you've healed her. You raised her up. She just kept right on going as a nurse and just wouldn't quit. And, uh, Lord, I, I just think you honored her faith and you saw fit to deliver her from this cancer, Lord. Um, we also know that uh, Ted Swaddling just recently was diagnosed with cancer. And Lord, I want to lift him up to you because um, it's bone cancer and he's trying a few uh, protocols of, of things to eat, and, and to, but he's not going to do chemo. He's not. So we pray for the 75-year-old man who has been diagnosed, uh, lives just down the road. Lord, you know he came here with his mother before she passed. Helen Swaddling was just a wonderful person and a great um, sort of a great uh, faithful supporter of the church and, and this church here. So, Lord, as I got to pray with Ted, I just sense, Lord, that... Um, that you want to do a work in his heart as well as in his body. Um, we pray that his heart would be surrendered to you so that when it is his time, he would go to be with you, go to heaven. Oh, and then we lift up the Forrest family to you. Jennifer's grandma, Carol, passed away Thursday. Lord, we pray for comfort and unity uh, for the family. Bring peace at this time. Into the family, Lord, we know that Grandma Carol will be very missed. And Lord, Margaret's not feeling well. Margaret Thrall has uh, moved, <laughs> moved, her, moved over to Saginaw, and she's just feeling sick, so we pray that you would help her get well. And we lift up Vernon and Kathy to you. They're on a three-week trip. Uh, and it says here we pray, Jesse says, pray for peace, comfort, and a joyful time and traveling mercies in their little car all the way to Florida. <laughs> Not Florida, California. <laughs> That's even further, California. And thank you, Lord, for victory over our addictions. Give us freedom. All right. Cheryl says, would you pray for my friend Nancy? Well, Lord, Nan we, know, we see that here that Nancy had oral surgery. She's slowly and painfully recovering. Lord, help her to recover. Take the pain away. Uh, touch her heart as well as, as her mouth and bring that healing there. Um, and so, Lord, as we head into a time of praying for the healing of human hearts, pray, that, Lord, that you would be with us, that you would move, show us your love. Uh, let your love flow among us, Lord. Even as we use this little bit of oil, Lord, we just pray that that it would represent your love and that your love would flow into the physical hearts of and the physical bodies of your people. Did one of, one of you want to be anointed? Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let's stand together and sing this goodness of God song to remind us how good God is and how faithful he's been over the years. I love you, Lord. Your mercy never fails me.
Well, let's go in God's grace, and may he bless you as you go and sing of the goodness of God to a hurt and dying world. Amen.